There's a relatively common but completely untrue assumption out there that therapy is only for broken people. In fact, I've seen it myself where I've told people that I have a therapy session that evening only for them to ask me, is everything okay? But the truth is, therapy comes in all different shapes, sizes and styles, and there isn't a one size fits all. While it is true that different people need a therapist to different degrees and at different stages in their life, I have no doubt though in my mind that everyone can benefit from having one. Counter to common belief, a therapist's job isn't to ask you cliched questions. How do you feel right now? Or to poke at your emotions and make you feel uncomfortable. Seems that you're insecure with your sweet self, so you're emphasizing your tough self. Hmm? Am I right or am I wrong? Where's your file? A therapist is there to help you alleviate your own personal suffering and to point you and guide you in the right direction to help you form more healthy habits and behaviors. Ultimately, they help you form productive answers to your own personal problems. So in this video, we're gonna delve into what a therapy session could look like break down what the different types of therapy and the different types of therapists are, and answer some basic questions such as, does it matter if your therapist is male or female? And do they have to match in terms of cultural background or ethnicity? So we're gonna start broadly with the different types of therapists and the different types of therapy sessions, and this could hopefully point you in the right direction to know what to look for and the kinds of things that could resonate with you personally. So the first type of therapist is not typically thought of in the same light as many other types, but nonetheless, it's very useful and very beneficial for a huge number of people, and that is the life coach. So the purpose of a life coach is to help you come to terms with the kinds of things that are important and meaningful in your own life, help you form a plan, work towards various goals, point you in the right direction, and then help you when you have setbacks. There are many people who overlook the benefits of having a life coach because they kind of see that that role is already filled either by some family or friends, but the main reason why life coaching is so useful is because they can provide an objective and neutral source to the kinds of things that you care about. Typically, life coaches have a very solid foundation in psychology and motivation, and they can use this knowledge to help you build a framework which in turn will help you aim towards and achieve your goals. The next type of therapist is less goal orientated and more emotionally orientated, and that is the psychotherapist. Just for clarification, psychotherapist is one word as opposed to a therapist who's a psycho. The role of a psychotherapist is to help you deal with, manage, and overcome any issues that you may have with your own mental health, including any of the following. Addiction, depression, anxiety, panic disorders, eating disorders, phobias, post-traumatic stress disorder, or obsessive compulsive disorder. Some of the main techniques that these therapists employ are CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, relaxation training, or exposure therapy. CBT essentially helps you reprogram your own mind by replacing old, unhelpful, and unhealthy beliefs with new, positive, and beneficial ones. If you suffer from anxiety, then having some tools, techniques, and strategies that you can employ at any moment to help you calm down, relax, focus on what you need to, and worry less about what could go wrong, then this is the kind of thing that therapists can do through relaxation techniques. Exposure therapy is typically reserved to some kind of phobia, where in a very careful, considered, and deliberate manner, you're able to face the kinds of things that you particularly fear, and over time, those fears tend to go away, and you're able to manage those fears and phobias in a more constructive manner. The next type of therapist tends to focus more on relationships, and that is the counselor. So whether you're having issues with your relationship, marriage, divorce, or bereavement, a counselor can provide a safe space to discuss various issues that you may be having, help you deal with coping strategies, and ultimately provide some kind of support along the way. Of course, counseling could be done both in an individual environment or collectively, i.e. with a group or with your partner. So the next type of therapist is specific to medical issues. So if that particular problem that you're having isn't resolvable by any other means, then you might need to see a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist has the ability to prescribe drugs, medication, and more advanced therapies because ultimately they are a doctor and have a medical qualification. So one thing to point out about this one, and I know at times your own mental health issues can seem very troublesome and agonizing, 
but the way that a psychiatrist works is that you are typically referred to them and they're not the first port of call. It's easy to jump to the conclusion that if you're experiencing severe anxiety or stress or depression, that there must be something inherently wrong with you, but the reality is it could actually just be a behavioral or belief related issue. This brings me to the point of the bear model, where your beliefs influence your emotions, which influence your actions, and that influences your results. So for example, if you have low self-esteem, then this could lead to the belief that you're not worth taking care of, and that in turn could lead to a whole suite of emotions such as sadness, depression, and anxiety, which in turn can lead to some actions in terms of what you end up doing with your life and how you interact with other people. Obviously, these interactions will then shape the kinds of results that you get in your life, which in turn provides a continuous and self-fulfilling prophecy. Psychiatrists really come into play when there's a particular part of the brain or brain system that isn't quite functioning properly, and therefore they usually intervene with either some kind of medication or some kind of medical procedure or process. Naturally, there are going to be some people who need a psychiatrist, but it's usually better to assume that this isn't going to be the case for you and therefore talking to some other kind of therapist or even reading and understanding more about this type of topic can really help. In the past I made a video on a particular book that really helped me personally come to terms with my own mental health and helped me provide a platform to be able to overcome the issues that I was having and that is The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters. I think this is a really good place to start when you're trying to understand your own mental health, but obviously if you can do this alongside some kind of therapy session, you will get the best of both worlds. And the last type of therapist, which I'm kind of going to gloss over because it's not really related to your own mental health, but rather physical issues, and that is the physiotherapist or the occupational therapist. Suffice it to say, the role of these therapists is to help you overcome any issues that you had with injuries or setbacks and help you get back to where you were before it even happened. So the next topic I wanna to cover is the individual, personal, and communication style that different therapists may have, and which one may suit you. So the way I'm gonna do this is break things down based on individual personality, and I'm gonna use the color model, which I previously made a video on, so I'm gonna link it up above and down below in the description if you're interested in that. To quickly summarize, there are four different types of personality types or colors, and they are red, blue, yellow, and green. Red personalities are more dominant and goal oriented and therefore when it comes to a therapist, it makes sense and it's more likely that you will resonate with someone who's more direct, blunt, and cut through the BS. Red personalities typically need a no-nonsense and concise approach to feedback and some of the things that they can action because they're goal oriented, they're very good at setting their sights on a particular goal and seeing it through. So yellow personalities are very extroverted, chatty and creative. So the goal of a therapist, if you're a yellow personality, is for you to do most of the talking, but the therapist to just steer and guide the conversation in a way that's gonna help you come to terms with and deal with whatever issue that you may have. Yellow personalities are typically not known for their listening ability, so instead, if they do most of the talking, but the therapist just helps them refine that particular conversation, they're able to come to their own conclusions and then act internally on them. Green personalities are known for their social harmony, people-pleasing, conflict avoidance, and their desire to simplify everything in life. Since green personalities spend a lot of time thinking and worrying about what other people may think of them, the best approach to a therapy session is having a therapist that is kind, nurturing and gentle so they can encourage them out of their comfort zone and in towards a more productive place. In many ways, greens and reds are polar opposites. So if you're green and you have a therapist that is direct, blunt and cut straight to it without taking the time to make you feel nurtured, appreciated and reassured, then this might not work for you. Since greens go at a much slower pace than reds, having a therapist that understands these needs and can gently and slowly encourage you is the best approach. And finally, we have blue personalities, and these are the logical, analytical, and information-orientated people. Blue personalities are very orderly, and they require a lot of background information and knowledge before they're going to act on anything. So having a therapist that is clear, articulate, able to explain themselves fully and in depth is key to a blue personality. 
At the end of the day, knowledge, precision and logic are very fundamental and very important to blue personalities, so having a therapist that is on that wavelength is very important. So, so far, if you're interested in therapy and you know what type of therapy that you need and the style of therapist that would most resonate with you, then you might be left wondering, does it matter if your therapist is male or female and does their cultural background or ethnicity matter? In a way, the answer to both questions is the same, which is, it's a trade-off between relatability and familiarity and someone who can help you push your boundaries and give you an alternative perspective. So let's take the example that if you were a heterosexual male and you've been struggling with the romantic relationships in your life, then a male therapist can help you navigate the world from a man's perspective and help you realize what you might be doing wrong in that regard, but a female therapist can help you understand things from the perspective of a woman. So in a way, neither one is better, they just have different pros and cons. The same is true when looking at cultural similarity. If your therapist has grown up in a similar background or country, then that could be useful if the kinds of things that you're struggling is specific to your own culture or the area that you're currently living. Whereas if you get a therapist who comes from a different cultural background or ethnicity, they can also help you see things from a different perspective and this can help you broaden your horizons. I think overall when seeking a therapist, it actually works quite similarly to when you're seeking a romantic relationship in that you often don't know what is best for you until you actually find it. So based on this idea, it's often helpful to keep an open mind and not restrict yourself too much because the best therapist might not necessarily be the one that you are initially thinking of. And the last thing that I want to cover is the therapy environment. So that is where and how you actually conduct these therapy sessions. Because of modern technology, gone are the days where the only possible option to do a therapy session is by physically going to that particular venue. The good news though is it still is an option in many cases, so if you prefer an in-person environment and that helps you connect more on a personal level with your therapist, then this is the kind of approach that you should seek out. But there are many other websites and services that provide alternative means of having therapy sessions, and this can include phone calls, web chat and video calls. Obviously it all comes down to personal preference and availability, but in my opinion if you have the choice it's better to lean towards either in person or video calls and if that's not possible then a phone call is still good. Web chat is better than nothing and it can help you understand and answer basic queries, but when it comes to really connecting and dealing with some kind of issue or making positive strides going forward, it's much better to have something a little bit more personal. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, feel free to subscribe, like, or leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.